But the moral law still applies. Somebody said, how you know, overseer? Because in the Old Testament, God said, thou shalt not murder. And I got some news for y'all. Thou shalt not murder in the New Testament either. Amen. Hello, somebody. Jesus even put a spin on it that raises the level of righteousness beyond what was taught in the Old Testament because the Old Testament says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But the New Testament, Jesus said, if they smack you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. The Old Testament says you can lend money to somebody seven times and at the end of seven times, don't lend the money anymore. You can forgive people seven times, but at the end of seven times, you don't have to forgive them anymore. But Jesus said, forgive folks as God has forgiven you, which means our forgiveness is up. Oh, God help us. In the Old Testament, we tithe, which is scripture teaches us that we're saved by grace and not by works our own efforts lest any man should boast therefore salvation is a gift to be received it is not a reward to be earned <sighs> but we're living now in the 21st century and there's a subtle attack from the enemy of our souls behind the scenes Satan's cunning influence is wreaking havoc in the culture that we live in. I don't praise him, but we need to know the enemy. If we intend to stand firm and defeat him in spiritual warfare, we need to know the enemy. But look at your neighbor and say that anointing that comes from God is the core of what gives us power to live as believers in a crooked and perverted generation. But before we go any further, we need to look quickly at what is typically taught as the applications and manifestations of the anointing of God. First of all, we're taught that the anointing is in order for us to do ministry work. God anoints us to teach. He anoints us to preach. He anoints us to pray. He anoints us to do mission work, to do benevolence. He anoints us to be a blessing in the lives of other folks. And I'm not saying that that's not the case. It is. But look at your neighbor and say, there's more to the anointing than that. We are also secondly taught that we're anointed in order to have godly power to wage spiritual warfare with great success. So anointing affects your prayer life. It affects your ability to decree and declare, to speak over folks, to speak into people under the unction of the anointing, and God will bring it to pass. But look at your neighbor. Say, there's more to it than that. Thirdly, we're typically taught that we are anointed to operate the gifts of the Spirit that we have received from the Holy Ghost. In other words, the gifts are activated by the power of the anointing of God operating in our lives. Look at your neighbor and say, but there's more to it than that. But what about this business of the anointing destroying the yoke? In order for us to have a better revelation, a clarity of understanding, that's why we're looking at Psalms 23, verse 5. The B call says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Uh, can we talk shepherding? Yeah. 23rd Psalm is dealing with shepherding in the biblical fashion. Mm. There's something that can happen to a flock of sheep. They can be invaded by a pest, if you will, a parasite. It's called a bot fly. Those of you who've been here long enough, you heard me talk about it before, but I got a different slant today. Bot flies are not very big, they're very light in weight. And bot flies, if you will, are able to deposit their eggs in their own saliva inside the nostrils, the ear canals, or the mouth of sheep without ever landing inside the nostril, the ear canal, or the mouth. If the sheep cannot hear the bot flies, they don't know that they're around. When the bot fly lays its eggs in the sheep, deposit those eggs in the ear canal, but mainly most often in the nostrils, the eggs hatch and the larvae crawl into the sinus cavities of the sheep. Now, now y'all know that in, in, in husbandry,
degree as in with us as mammals that your ears, your nose, and your throat are all connected together. So let me back up for a moment. If the larvae hatch in the mouth, they go into the throat and make their way to the nasal passages. If they hatch in the ears, they go inside the head and make their way to the nasal passages. If they hatch in the nostrils, they go up into the sinus cavities, making their way where they want to go. When the larvae arrive, they're not very big at all. They secrete a chemical that acts like histamine. It causes the sheep to secrete excessive mucus. Now I know somebody said, oh, that sounds nasty. Well, let me just deal with a little biology here. Y'all hang with me. The mucus is what the butterfly larvae want. Look at your neighbor and say, that's what they eat. As they eat, they continue to secrete the chemicals, which causes the sheep to secrete much more mucus, which causes the larvae to get bigger, and they move into a second stage. Now, the sheep can be infected, one sheep, with as much as between 20 and 80 larvae at a time. As the larvae get bigger and the sheep secrete more mucus, their nasal passages begin to clog up. The sheep now have trouble breathing. They become irritated. And after a while, it gets to be so bad, it becomes painful. And the sheep will go and butt his head against a rock or against a tree, trying to shake the headache that is now developing because the butt fly larva has secreted so much. Oh, God help us. Yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, watch out for little things. Yes. Because when those little things invade your life. Yes. Most of them will make their way back down the nasal passages and drop out to the ground. They go into the pupa stage and out comes a new butt fly. And the cycle starts all over again. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, evil that sneaks in doesn't always come out on its own. Some of the larva get so large until it can't make it out of the sinus cavities and will eventually die inside the sheep's head. <sighs> Sounds like deliverance, doesn't it? Yeah. But look at your neighbor and say, not quite. Because when the larvae die, as the body decays, its chemical composition changes into a poison that sets up a different infection that can actually kill the sheep. So it looks like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Well, wise, astute, observant shepherds listen and pay attention to the sheep. They listen for the buzzing sound of the flies. They watch the sheep in case the sheep hear the flies buzzing because when the sheep hear the flies buzzing, they shake their heads and they snort. They may put their heads down close to the ground so that the flies Yeah. Uh -huh. 